Hey everyone, welcome to Buzzing About Romance, a quick shot of romance. I am Becky, and joining me for this episode, Heather's already given us thumbs up, like the bubble went up. <laughs> That's fantastic. Anyway, joining me for this episode is Heather. Hi, Heather. Hello. And Jenny. Hey, Jenny. Hey, Becky. And Lindsay. Hello, Lindsay. Hello. Um, so this pick, I'm kind of excited about this, right? Like, what a way to kick off Pride Month um, with this number. And it, I'm really excited to get into it because the backdrop, I think, is what is one of the most intriguing pieces of this. That's right. Um, yes. It, anyway, we'll get into it. Um, so for... Our selection this week, we are talking about Lights, Camera, and Passion by Isabella Lacerio. Um, this will be a spoiler review, so if you haven't read the book, you might want to pause. Um, you can move to the end to see if we give it our thumbs up or thumbs down. Um, but if you don't want to be spoiled, you might want to pause. Um, stick with us for the next little while as we break down the enchanting details of Lights, Camera, Passion. Real quick, Jenny, you were kind of obsessed with this cover, even in e-form. <laughs> I was. Okay, so it probably is not, like, purposely made that way. But when you click the on button, like, they're cast in a spotlight and you have, like, the silhouette. But then when you press the on button, you can see their face. Yeah, it kind well, of moves like... a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a really pretty. Um, and it's one of the more intriguing object covers. I would agree. Yes. Like, mm -hmm. this is an object cover I'm okay and I would buy. Yeah, and it made sense. Yeah, it did. It Everything on it made sense. Ha uh, you know, it has a little bit of sparkle and shine to it. Um, given that it's in the background of Hollywood, it just, it really works. I agree. Um, okay, so things to know before we start. The release date was April 8th of 2024. Um, this is Enemies to Lovers, Hollywood Romance, Pining, Secret Romance, Grumpy Sunshine, Forced and Close Proximity, and a Slow Burn. And I say slow burn. It does pop early, but I don't feel the intimacy and the relationship truly get going into its full force till 61 percent so i think it depends on where you say it pops because i had it popped at 35 percent. but they get busy at 15 which kind of busy <laughs> well there were tongues mouths and penises involved i had well I, to be fair, I read this as an arc. Yeah. So. That's fine. I, that's, I, I put it right. at 35. You're right. There so. wasn't any thrusting until 30 some percent. Yes. Penetrative was 42%. Penetrative. I know all of that when I, when it comes to my <laughs> male romances. <laughs> Again, do not. Not every, not every male male romance does penetrate it. Like that isn't. Yeah, like, it, it's not uncommon to not find that, which is perfectly. It's fine. Yeah, Where's so that? I would think that like, because Becky's number would be right then, because there's an O, right? Right, there is an O, mm -hmm. at fifteen percent. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But I feel like the true intimacy, connection, them. It's... That's why I said slow burn because it does that does not happen till 61 percent true um okay so put out percentage i have at 15 percent heather has it 35 percent i also have it at 61 percent any other percentages anyone wants to add we're very specific about our popping here people. right popping is most important there's a lot of pop that's the point there is a lot of popping it sure. does okay but i will say it all of it makes sense. None of this sex felt mm -hmm. gratuitive. This was not just an author throwing in another sex scene so that we had another sex scene. Like each one built on the next, pushed them to the next level, pushing them out of comfort zones into places where they weren't sure how to navigate. 
Correct. Um, okay, so this is available in Kindle Unlimited. Right now, it is only available in ebook. Uh, ebook. Ebook. <laughs> making up new words. <laughs> paperback form. Um, but I think Isabel does typically, like, she will add audio eventually. It just takes some time. She uh, sells those rights out typically. Um, okay, so let's get into lights, camera, passion. Um, what? Okay, so let's just start with Mr. Jacoby because I have him first in my list of notes. He, well, so to start, Jacoby is like the it guy in right. Hollywood, right? Mm -hmm. He's yes. like, yeah. he's like the, he's the it guy. And they are on set of, it's a really popular male, male book. And they are adapting it to film form. And there's tons of pressure to get it right. Like, it's like major, the book world is like, this book is amazing. Don't mess it up. It's red, white, and royal blue. Yeah. Also gives a yep. little bit of the Brokeback Mountain vibe. <laughs> It does have Brokeback Mountain vibes, but it is said. So, I mean, that's something that I love. I love a Hollywood norm romance, but this was Hollywood Hollywood. So this is two mm -hmm. stars navigating a relationship that is on the quiet side because everybody's in the closet in the beginning. Nobody yes. is out, which is very oh. intriguing. Um for that take, you know, that they both felt that they had to protect themselves, that they could not, you know, like, uh, Roman's family, right? His family yeah. knows and they disowned him. Other no. than his sister. No. no, the other way around, right? So his sister. Roman's sister knows. Roman's sister just kind of assumed but like they've never had a conversation about it and roman's parents died okay uh -huh. it's jacoby's they were very parents. open jacoby's parents his sister fallon is also Queer. his sister fallon had come out as a lesbian and his parents were not she was, yeah she, so she because was of the way, yeah because of the way that that panned out he had not come out to his parents so you do, so we kind of have to content warning that a little bit. There is uh -huh. some bigotry, homophobia um, yeah. that happens in this book, which as a parent, can I just say, I don't understand. Me either. I don't freaking get it. <laughs> I was sort of I don't like, know. F those parents. Like, right? suck it. Seriously I'll be your mom. I don't know I was freaking. I was like, well, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> we're all like disney the hell out of those parents we're done <laughs> no kidding um but i do think like the, that dynamic played a lot into his perception mm -hmm. his broader perception of what it would be like coming out to everyone else because of the very poor reception of the people that he was closest to he prioritized preservation of that relationship over being his authentic self yeah. And I think that that comes down to it with this book. Neither character uh -huh. is truly being their authentic self. Um, yeah. And because of the spotlight of Hollywood, the perceptions of other people, they really are struggling to figure out what their footing looks like and who they are. Yeah. They really are. It's really interesting to me that the mask that they wear is what they don't like about each other and when they actually like strip those back and be their true selves with each other that's when they start forming a really great relationship and i love that they did that so well <laughs> she really is about did a really good job with that yeah so and the the buildup of how much they hate each other like their banter oh man oh like, just that opening sequence tension. just the opening sequence where you know um I believe it's Roman who is pissed that they have to go get in this car. He's complaining to his sister about having Arch Jacoby. I am going to screw these names up. You guys. Yeah, it is Jacoby. Jacoby's, Jacoby's on his phone. Yeah. Complaining to his sister that they have to go and stay in this cabin and be together, forced together for three days. And he is so mad. 
I mm-hmm. put this as also a little bit of miscommunication trope because the reason that they dislike each other are miscommunication and misrepresentation, I would say. Um, but like that instance in the car is really interesting because of it, like it comes up later in the book and it's just funny because like the part, like, Roman snooping on Jacoby and he sees like the words like kill and die and like all this stuff and he's <laughs> like you're writing about me you're complaining about me and like the context is so taken out of play I just I love like how that comes to light later in the book like how they clarify that well it's really funny. And, and also talk about pining the fact that you know they have this animosity between themselves due to this miscommunication that you know Jacoby thinks Roman has made homophobic comments about him and Mm -hmm. they have this animosity but it's really like it leads to this really great tension and chemistry and banter between them Mm -hmm. it does like, their three days in the cabin is hysterical. I really thought they were mm-hmm. going to burn it down there for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> the way they were acting. I thought they were, they were going to, like, anger bang right then and there. And I was yeah. like, why aren't they? I thought it was going to be a one-bed situation. <laughs> <laughs> I did, too. <laughs> um, but you quickly learn how much they are pining for each other. Yes. Yes. And we all know I love a good pine. I was not a team Jacoby. I thought he was a major oh. jerk. And the more you get into his head, the more my like mom heart just softened for him because he's really just a rejected little boy who needs support and people to love him because the outside world also is kind of cruel to him. Like he's this it kid in you know, and he's supposed to be this person that he doesn't feel inside he is. And it's it's a really, you feel terrible for him. Yeah. He also pursued a career. It didn't seem like he was entirely, com- I don't want to say he was dis- uncomfortable with the spotlight, but he definitely wasn't like the Hollywood it boy that he was portrayed publicly to be. Right. Like He made the appearances. He did what was necessary to advance his career, but he seemed very uncomfortable with pub- like group situations. Like he didn't really drink. He didn't party. He wasn't, he was by no means like a rock star kind of Hollywood actor. He was just kind of like an everyday person who was going to work to do something he really deeply cared about. And I like that take on acting too. Yeah, like, yeah it's a job. Art. Yeah, the commitment to the art and it being a job and a passion. Um, and I really liked like how that came to light with Jacoby's character in particular. Jenny, were you team Jacoby or team Roman to start with? Well, I was, I was a little taken back that he was pining as well, um, because we don't get that right away. Right. So I thought that was an interesting like take on his personality, and then I was like, dude, then like, why are you being a jerk? Yeah. And then we find out. So, and mm-hmm. I think that plays into the chemistry because I really felt that the banter was great, but the chemistry was slow to come between the two of them that it was 55% of the book before I really start to feel that tangible chemistry between the two of them. And I I think, think go ahead, Lindsay. I, I agree. And I think it was because of how much they were both holding back. I think it read that way because they were both holding back so much. And I really liked how that came out in the pacing. Yeah. Well, I think the- because there's the catalyst, like when he finds out that Emmy, when Jacoby finds out that Emmy, Roman's ex, is a guy, the mm. pacing changes completely. Yeah. It's completely different at that point. Like the chemistry builds very quick. It's like all barriers are down for both of them. They're both being vulnerable with each other and honest and their true selves. And then like from that point on, they're navigating external circumstances, like how to, they're navigating, like how to handle external circumstances from their relationship. 
and it builds pretty quick. I do feel like because they were so closed off and we missed that chemistry a little bit, there were times as you were reading this that they did feel a little wooden in character, like just moving through the motions. They didn't have the depth I wanted, I guess, more insight, more insight of them coming together, maybe. I there's a, actually a scene I just reread it today. It's after they were intimate and they were like at Jacoby's house and he was so relaxed and um, oh my god I completely blanked on the other one oh Roman. Roman Roman <laughs> was like what's up with you and he's like I can be who I am like this is who I am I don't have to be someone else like this is who I am I don't have to pretend I'm completely relaxed and Roman was like I like this version of Jacoby yeah a lot. Yeah. And there were just, I think, I just wish we had had more moments like that, like that. Mm -hmm. to help. Because like Lindsay said, the pacing of this book read really great. There was never mm -hmm. a moment where I was like, oh, Jesus, I'm bored. Like, come on already. Like, I was invested. I was there with these characters. But, there, you know, there's just moments in your head where you're like, oh, I wish we had a little bit more insight or, you know some more emotion but again it is dudes and they are dudes um and i think that's something that isabel lacerio writes very well is that some men are just not emotional and these two characters were not really feely guys no they're also i feel like young they're, uh, no. 24, 29. Romans 24. Oh. Toby's 29. Yeah, they're okay. 29, 24. I still, maybe it's because I'm old. <laughs> well, I right. think Jacoby being forced into the spotlight, forced to be an actor, you know, they are playing characters that are younger than them. So I think that that does allow for some allowances. Um, so just so we know, and Suze will appreciate this, I do have a note that it was difficult to distinguish sometimes between Jacoby and Roman's POVs due to their voices were very similar. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I did have to check at the beginning of the chapter a couple of times. Yeah. So I think I, that I will give myself some grace for mixing up the names because their voices were, they were a little, they're neat. They were both dynamic, but they were dynamic in similar ways. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, and, well, and they have a shared profession, right? Right. Like, mm -hmm. um, she does something in this book. I, I thought it was going to go one way, and it didn't. And it was about how they were able to come out to the public with their relationship. I was, there was a scene, and I was like, oh my God, please tell me that the paparazzi are not going to be there for this. I, I was like physically sick to my stomach. And the way she handled it was amazing. I love how they were able to come out on their terms and in the way they wanted. It was so well handled. And you mm -hmm. hope, you know, I think of like Jim Parsons, the guy that played um, Sheldon Cooper on The Big Bang Theory. Yep. He was never not out, but he never made yep. it part of himself moving forward. And so some of the first times that he brought his partner out, it was, again, handled in that really careful, respectful way. It was done naturally without fanfare. The, the paparazzi didn't expose him. And it just felt more authentic, you know. Yeah. But well, we, no one... No one's announcing that they're heterosexual, right? Like, right, <laughs> right. right. But we do see, you know, when a beloved actor, and I think this is something Isabel did really well, when you have a beloved actor, you know, like say Chris Evans, I mean, dude has had many girlfriends break up with him because fans went feral on her. They'd find out who she was, not be kind to her, and she, they've just walked away and said, I'm not doing your kind of crazy. Um, and so could you imagine being two Hollywood stars and knowing that y you are somebody's, you know, 
their hall pass or whatever. And now you have the potential. I mean, it could have been so dramatic and I liked that it wasn't. Yeah, me too. I, it was, that was actually my favorite part of the entire, like the book. I loved the book, but that was, I love how they were able to come out the way they wanted to. And I think I agree. No, I don't think you should have to come out. I don't like that. I, I just, I don't think there should be an expectation of you telling the world who your romantic partner is. I don't think that should be a thing. Yeah. We, so, yeah. I just really loved it. We don't have to announce every time we change partners or do things with someone new. I mean, well, if you're single, if you're in a committed relationship, that's a different well, story. <laughs> I just, I think about some of like the boy band, car- like the boy band guys sure. who are gay and now they're openly gay, but like when they came out, it was not done. Was not done well. Right. well it was not done in like regard, like kindness Lance Bass was all. forced to date girls and take girls on the red carpet, or his mom or his sister, because it wasn't okay for him to go with whoever was his partner at the time. Same with Jonathan Knight. Yeah. Right, and that's the like position Jacoby been like at the beginning of this book, right? Like. He has Faye, who was his beard for a while. Yeah. yeah, so they had that conflict over Faye as well, where Jacoby had been with Faye, and Faye was his beard, one of the only people who knew about his true self. And Roman had briefly like gone on three dates with Faye, and the media like spun their rivalry out of control over, pinned it all on Faye, and it turned. I love that. I do love like how they handled Faye as well because she knew both of them and then like she wound up being a safe space for them to kind of like have one other person yeah. who knew the truth that they could be their real selves with. And then mm-hmm. I liked that I liked that Jacoby had his sister Fallon as well like even though he was hiding so much of himself he did have people that were encouraging him to open up yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah, his relationship with his sister was interesting like when he came out to his parents um I don't know that wasn't how I saw that going Mm -hmm. yeah no and then like with Roman Chelsea it was like a no big deal kind of discussion with Chelsea but Chelsea kind of gave Jacoby the heads up that like he is really holding himself back emotionally because he wasn't processing the grief from his parents he was just like doing all these things dating all these people like being out in the spotlight burying himself in work and I think like having those people like when they started telling people that they were together and that they liked each other um and that they were dating like having those people to help them kind of like navigate the path forward I think otherwise like it would have been really overwhelming for them to have to like come out to people to announce their relationship to figure out how to navigate Hollywood and it was nice to see that they had a support system yeah Um, I think Roman was forced to be the emotional support and he never like he supported his sister through the grief and so there like he felt like he was always on and supporting people and it wasn't until Jacoby stepped in and was like you have to learn to lean on people yeah that was a really great scene regarding Mm -hmm. their um, that was a great emotional scene talking about grief and accepting help and support and you don't have to be alone. You don't have to hide the feelings. Um, and it led to bigger pictures, right, in this book. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it was a small moment that helped us realize, like, hey, you know, you don't have to hide who you are. Um, yeah. That people will love you even if things aren't perfect. Um, I also really like that, like, so much of the relationship building towards the happily ever after was very organic. Like, a lot of it happened naturally as part of the story. There wasn't really any manufactured drama. 
No, just that miscommunication starting yeah. like that we leapt in with, right? Like outside yeah. of that, there wasn't any, you know, no exes show up, no pictures of one of the guys kissing somebody else or anything like that. Yeah. Um, okay. Is there anything in the writing style? Did you have any thoughts on her writing style as an author, how the book paced, how things move through? I do think that she's an author that likes to tell us everything versus showing us through communication. Like we got lots of details, lots of descriptions, um, it created for some slower moments, but I feel like you, you know, your eyes are trained to go to the next set of dialogue. Anybody mm -hmm. else? Thoughts? And it, there's a few spots in the book where like she jumps ahead a couple of weeks or a couple of months too. So it does take place over a longer period of time. It's not like a two month long romance. It's like a, the time period is at least six, six to eight months. Yeah. Um. Okay. Does anybody else have any other thoughts that they would like to talk about with Late's Camera Passion? Before I ask about your thumbs up, thumbs down. Oh, I did have one more thing. Okay. I really like the parallels between their work and what they were each personally navigating and then how that kind of helped them navigate yeah. it when they actually got to that point later in the book. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was really well done. It was foreshadowing done in such a way that you didn't really, it wasn't smacked in your face, right? Right. Sometimes it's very clear that we're foreshadowing future incidents. <laughs> but she has a subtlety in her voice and the clarity in which she writes, you know, those moments. I didn't feel like we were like, oh, yeah, we better pay attention to this. It's going to come around. Yeah, you wanted to pay attention. You kind of wanted to know what was next for them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you feel like the HEA was HEA or HFN? I'm just curious. HEA, and it was really incredibly sweet. I love the epilogue. I don't know if you even read it, Becky, but it was cute. <laughs> it was so sweet. Um, I did And like, read like as we get towards the end of the book, it like talks about how they're navigating their relationship with the pressures yeah. of Hollywood and conflicting schedules and like they don't see each other very much. And like it showed them making time for their relationship and prioritizing mm -hmm. each other and like having a strong bond through all of that. So I felt very much HEA. I felt HEA. I so agree. I didn't feel like I needed to read the epilogue. I'm sorry. Like the HEA was there. I was like, these guys are together. I don't need any more. But it was, it was so good. <laughs> She's in race. I'm going to have to re-download it. It's just like the Christmas letter. It's like you get their Christmas letter. You know, you're checking in with old friends. Like, how's it going? You know. Do you read every Christmas letter people send you? Yes. Yeah. I do. Okay. I'm also nosy. That's probably why. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I'm a good gossip. <laughs> Ask Jenny. I love a gossip. Yeah. But... People are writing that in their Christmas. <laughs> but nobody's giving me the true grit and dirt like that I want. I did a whole Facebook deep dive just this afternoon about someone. So I hear you. I love me some gossip. <laughs> oh my goodness. And Lindsay's like, no, we're just cool. Do they know anything about baseball? That's <laughs> <laughs> true. <laughs> right, Lindsay. I won't lie, I stayed up until like 11 p.m. watching baseball videos. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, okay, so let's do our thumbs up, thumbs down, and then we can recommend books that might be similar. Um, so, Lindsay, you're first. Thumbs up, <laughs> thumbs down. Thumbs Two up. thumbs up. Double thumbs up. I really liked it. It was great. I thought it was, it, it was one of my favorite. It was my favorite sip and discuss read we've done so far. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Jenny, thumbs up, thumbs down. Thumbs, thumbs up. up. Heather, thumbs up, thumbs down. Thumbs up. I'm thumbs up. I really enjoyed this book. I really like Isabel's writing style. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. yes, I do think she's a little overly descriptive, but I've read several books by her and I love them. And she has a way um, of writing that's just really well, really well done. Um, do you have any titles if people really enjoyed this book that they should check out? I do. Go, Sometimes Heather. I do. Um, I think Eden Finley's Fake Boyfriend series is very good. Okay. Very, very good. Um, I also think if you kind of like the banter and humor, hers was, this was less humor, that 
uh, Puck Boys series by Amy Finley and Saxon yeah. James. Uh, Jenny, do you have any? Um, Cambria Herbert has the Gear Shark series, which they're race car drivers, um, and there's two male male relationships in that. Um, so some of the similar dynamics, like yeah, being public and yeah. Okay, Lindsay, you got me. Yeah, I do. Pretty much anything by Max Walker. I'm obsessed with him. I love his books. Like, just read <laughs> them all. Um, but he's also dabbled into fantasy. So, like, for those of you who are really into, like, uh, Fourth Wing and dragon books, like, he has a fantasy book where they are dragons and they're also all male male. So far, there's two out. Um, and then sticking to the script, I recommend this all the time, but I really love this book. Like in um, Penny Reads Knitting in the City series, you meet Stephen Thompson. He's Janie's like best friend at work. And then this is his book. He winds up falling in love with Dr. Ken Miles, who is also featured in um, Janie's be other best friend's book as a like. Yeah, friends with that. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> anyway but it's he's the, also a jerk like you think he's a horrible person when you start the book yeah you think he's a horrible person but like they navigate a lot of like that new relationship kind of thing and then they navigate like he there's a stalker it's it's good that's a, one of my favorite books um, so I'm going to recommend it was my book of the week earlier this week, but I need somebody else to read this freaking book. You gotta wait for it to come out. <laughs> um, everyone I kissed since you got famous, it's female, female. And yes, it's a slower burn, but they both have stardom and it's different. One is Hollywood and the other is TikTok viral internet star. Um, and you know, this one really de deals with coming to terms with fame and what it like how your life changes with fame um and that you know even though you don't think it's really crazy that you went and got coffee everybody wants to know exactly what your coffee order is kind of fame um but i really love katie and will and they're my forever so but it has to be out for the rest of us to read it. That's the, yeah. I mean, I don't want to say that's the problem, but that is like, literally, we can't get it. We all like <laughs> ran over to NetGalley and they're like, sorry. We're like, thanks, NetGalley. <laughs> I only got the audiobook of it and I'm just, I'm obsessed. Also, it was written by two women that, it, so it's an author duo that are together. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. Like May Marvel, they're both authors, but they wrote this together and they're together. I love that. There's, there, yeah, I love that. So um, <laughs> When I Think of You by Maya Ariel is also set in Hollywood. It is male-female, though. Um, a Slower Burn, Close Proximity. Um, Man Spread by Vanessa Vale. It's set in Small Town, but again, it deals with... He is famous, but she has no idea that he is famous. Um, Natasha has that. Hollywood Playboy. Yep. Love on the Byline by Zio Axelrod. Uh, they both work in television. Um, so it's a little different. It's more of the back end of television. And she's a journalist. Um, let's see here. Shipwrecked by Olivia Dade. They're co-stars on set male female and it is phenomenal fat rep um i think that's what i got for now i have one more i haven't recommended this book in a really long mm -hmm. time i haven't read it in a long time so i don't know like how current it's written but melanie harlow and david romanoff wrote a book together a long time ago called strong enough yeah somebody else was talking about that earlier this <laughs> week i saw it I ha again, I haven't read it in like five years. I think five years, maybe longer, but it was really good. Um, Fake by Kylie Scott is Hollywood Norm. Um, she's a waitress, but he, if you like pining in Hollywood, uh, fake relationship. I cannot recommend that book enough. It is super well done. Um, okay, so those are our recommended books. Um be sure to visit our website to stay up to date on our upcoming selections. And we do have July's fully out, including our book club pick. Um, 
If you're a member of the Buzzing About Romance Patreon, you can contribute to our Sip and Discuss picks each month. Uh, Join us this Sunday night for our next Buzzing About Romance episode. Leah and I will be joined by author Melanie Moreland and author Carrie Ann Ryan. (laughs) So people, I have met both of these beautiful humans. Same. And they are amazing. Yeah. You just tune in. Becky and Leah don't even need to do that. 100%. We were, they don't really know each other very well. That uh, doesn't matter. matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, but we know Melanie, Melanie could interview a rock. Are you kidding me? <laughs> she probably could. Um, so make sure you join us for that episode. And then mark your calendars for next Wednesday when we dive into Savor It by Tara DeWitt. And I cannot wait to talk about that one with you guys. Also, I think even though we've had a couple of stumbles in our Wednesday picks, um, for the most part, I'm really enjoying them. It's forced me to read some... all be winners. Well, it's forced me to read some authors that have been lingering on my TBR, like Tara DeWitt. I thought she wrote Closed Door. (laughs) No. No, she doesn't. She I could have told you that. I read her all last summer. Well, I didn't know that. I got her mixed up with BK Borns, Bons, Bornson. Because the covers look almost identical. Yeah. She redid her covers, and I think they use the same artist. Also, I'm reading the saber, and I'm not giving anything away, but I got to a particular scene, and I am, I was just, like, dead of laughter. Oh, the t- I can't wait to talk to you. I won't. I will not give <laughs> stuff away, but... Anyway... Um, have I let, oh, Je- Jennifer's asking if I've let the MQ book go. No, no, because out of everyone, I'm the only one well, who read never. it. Never. What? The Megan Quinn book, Bridesmaid for Hire. You know, <laughs> the first book. Forever. The well, one that I'm oh, the only one yeah. who read. None of us have read that. Well, most of you DNF'd it. Well, I didn't come to the episode that day, so. You're not forgiven. Where was your <laughs> love, your solidarity, the same boat. <laughs> and support? The only way but to be forgiven we're, we're is to read Renna all Morgan. of Retta Morgan. Right. There we go. If we've read okay. Retta Morgan, we're forgiven, right? Yes. Well, I'm off the island. <laughs> that hasn't happened yet. I don't know how you, of all of us, have not read Retta Morgan. <laughs> You know, here's the thing. When someone tells me to do something, it's a defiance thing. And I'm like, <laughs> yep. I, the, the student population I teach, there's a reason that I teach this crowd because I'm sort of like double bird, like, but Justin says like he wants to listen to it on the way down to Louisville. So that's um, what we're... Jenny, how far did you make it in? Like the first that. three or four? Would... Yeah. 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 Hey, come on. Well, yeah. Yeah. Book three. Yeah. I just need to be in the group chat for your reaction when you finally read her. Okay. Because <laughs> to be honest, the text that I got from Amanda was, oh my God, why did I wait so long? And I'm like, um, I said sure. the same thing when I read her. And I think I read like, I don't know. She's in any play in Hoopla and like her books are super accessible. Yeah. So like if you're yeah. an audiobook lover or whatever, like. And you, they're done by John Lane. John Lane does the audiobooks. Anyway, we are so, off. Go ahead, Heather. We are completely off topic. <laughs> Side quest. It's like they're all in new our game. Chat. I feel terrible for these people. We are on a side quest <laughs> new we're game. <laughs> what were you going to say, Heather? I, I just, you're in our group chat and it's like a scary location. <laughs> it really is. We if you aren't perfect perfect on top of it, and, and if you miss like two hours, we're like seven topics past <laughs> what we were. <laughs> Some days, there was one day a couple of weeks ago, I walked away from my phone and I came back to like 68 messages. And I'm like, hmm, that's a lot. what I miss? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Don't even go back. It's not even worth it to go back because it, it's all like not really matter. No. Anyway. <laughs> no. Um, thank you everyone for joining us for this episode of Buzzing About Romance. Like I said, we're back Sunday night with um, two of our amazing author friends. Uh, thank you, Heather, Jenny, and Lindsay for reading Lights, Camera, Passion with me. Um, until next time, everybody. Happy reading. Find us on Instagram at Buzzing About Romance 
or on Twitter at Buzzing Romance. If you like the podcast, please leave a review. If you'd like to support us directly, join the Bookcase and Coffee Patreon and receive exclusive content only available to Patreon members. Check out bookcaseandcoffee.com for our on-the-shelf show notes.